If you don't know what time it is, then you might miss your appointment, right? Time is everything. Timing is everything. We Gentiles are on a Gregorian system. Jewish calendar is different than ours. It's very interesting to think about it because when you do, it makes a lot of sense. Hebrew is a lunar calendar and it's set differently than the solar calendar. The day begins at sundown. The climactic day of the week is Shabbat, the seventh day of the week. The moon and its phases in the night sky are the timepiece for the months and seasons of the year are marked with special festivals. Appointed times. Appointed times. Special festivals. And these blood moons are fallen on God's appointed times. They're not... Um, they're not special times. Well, they are, but first and foremost, they're not special times for the Jewish people. They're God's special times. He's the CEO of the company. They're his times, and you go to those meetings. That's one way to think about it. The years are numbered, and I mentioned that when I told you about Jonathan Kahn look him up and put some thought into what he is talking about. Every seventh year is a Shemitah. Leviticus 25, 2-5. After seven cycles of Shemitah, the Yovel, or Jubilee year, was to be observed. It's also found in Leviticus. According to the Jewish sages, the history of the world may be understood as seven 1,000-year days corresponding to the seven days of creation. And the Talmud states that this world will only exist for 6,000 years, while the seventh millennium will be an era of worldwide shalom. I can hear it now already. Man has said that Fossils are millions and hundreds of millions of years old. That's man, not God. Man lies, God doesn't. There's some pretty good information that you could school yourself on. It would be beneficial to you. It help you understand how the Gregorian calendar, the Gentile time, has been throwing us Westerners off. The Sunday Sabbath and such. From the real time, God sets the real times. And we all can agree that there was a Julian time, and now we're on Gregorian time. So we see two times after God set the clock in the beginning and made what we think of as time, and it's been changed by man according to what man says should be. But the true faithful of the Jewish religion has kept this time, the original time. The Jewish day begins at sundown. You have to remember that the Jewish holiday actually begins on the night before the day listed in the Jewish calendar. And you can scroll down and these are the names of their days of the week. And they are based on the cycle of the moon, duration of a Hebrew month, it's measured in the amount of time it takes for the moon to go through a lunar cycle, 29 and a half days roughly.
This is their calendar. And this is T37. And that will move into just bond eight, the eight months. The date of the Jewish holidays doesn't change from year to year. However, since the Jewish year is not the same length as a solar year on a Gregorian calendar, the date will appear to shift when viewed from the perspective of us on the Gregorian calendar. They compensate because The solar year is 365 days long, but their moon year is 354. An extra month is added to the calendar every two or three years to keep everything straight. <clears throat> every 19 years, there are seven leap years. So when we think about where are we in God's time, we're looking on our calendars over here. We're not looking on his calendar, most of us. And that's how they're screwing it up. That's why they're not always on spot. These are the festival seasons. Here's our little addendum. The Gregorian calendar is a revision of the Julian calendar, which was in and of itself a revision of the pagan. Roman Greek calendar retains most of the names of the days of the weeks and months of the year from pagan Rome, and therefore ancient Greece. The ancient Greeks named the days of the week. Remember, they worshipped the sun, a lot of them back then <clears throat> and before. Name the days of the week after the sun, the moon, and the five known planets, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn, which themselves were associated with the gods Ares, Hermes, Zeus, Aphrodite, and Cronus. You see how things work when you're in charge? They change things to screw you up so that you don't know what time it is, and I mean time in the big picture. I don't mean 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, or Tuesday afternoon. I mean the big picture of everything. These false god worshipers, Satanists, they change your time so that you don't know what time it really is in the big picture. Because they don't want you to be ready and on time for the appointment with God. They don't want you to understand what time it really is. Because they want you to miss it. They want you to not honor those feast times, those meeting times. They want you to not be able to know what the real Sabbath day is so that you're working on it instead of not working on it and worshiping on it. Think about it. Really think about it. <clears throat> Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Which came first? 
Jews or Gentiles? I think you know the answer to that. So Gentiles came second. And all the other stuff came after the original stuff. All the original dates, times, all God's meeting times came first. Changing the, the calendar and the times came after that. That was done by man. So it looks to me, man has done man's best to take a lot of people away from knowing what time it really is. That way everybody walks around not even thinking about it. Because this is the way you've been raised. This is the way that things have been taught to everyone. And nobody gives us a second thought. But I'm telling you, you got to get with the program, folks. You got to understand where we're at in history. When you see these things go on, financial collapses, wars, murder, everything. You have to, to try your best to understand where are you at. You have to break out the big black book, okay? You're not going to get it online. You're not going to get it from videos. You're probably not even going to get it from your own minister at your own church. Maybe a few spoonfuls here and there, but you're not going to get a full meal deal. That's up to you. You'd have to read it yourself. Do you understand that when you read the big black book, the Bible, you're not only informing yourself of things that you need to know, understanding and empowering yourself with the Word, you're pleasing your Maker. He is pleased with you when you do that. He sees you doing that. He knows you're doing it. He's right next to you when you're doing stuff like that. Because the more you do stuff like that, the closer you, you two get. So I'm telling you for, for your own good, <clears throat> these blood moons on these feast dates are utmost importance at this time in history. They're not coming back. I've told you this three, four times, maybe five, for at least four, at least three, I think over 400 years. You're not going to see it again. You're not going to see four blood moons falling on, because it's the most important thing, falling on Jewish feast dates. You're not going to have that for over 400 years. That is a red light. Take notice. Get ready. Answer the phone. I'm trying to call you. I'm trying to get a, your attention, folks on earth. This is the way I do things. It's, it's God. And you need to look around in the world and say, what's going on after these moons? And when you see what's going on, then you should be able to, to, to know what you need to be doing. Instead of partying and jacking around and screwing off, you need to be getting ready for some stuff. Because the sands of time are dropping down pretty fast in the hourglass. <clears throat> 